Is this the image of a passionate coach overcome with emotion or an unhinged megalomaniac? What facts do we see? A shout and a wind up? The toss with a follow through? Scowl? He's angry. The chair is thrown forcefully. But why? Is this righteous anger or an unjustified overreaction? How much can you tell from a single image? A truly great photo can accurately and honestly portray an entire scene all by itself, but those are exceedingly rare. Often an image captures action or emotion that can be left up to a certain amount of interpretation. To fully get a sense of these photos and who Bob Knight was, we need to look at a larger set of images. Now there are plenty to choose from, and the inexperienced or unscrupulous editor could choose a series of photos that paint Knight as a passionate leader or as an abusive patriarch. Look at the contrast of realities presented by these photos. Choosing all of one set or the other does not give us a full picture, but putting them all together and we get a better sense of who Bob Knight was. He was close to his players and fiercely loyal. He won games. He won championships. He also regularly, physically, and mentally abused the people around him. People are complicated, and when looking back at someone's legacy, it's fair game to take it all in together. So let's look at the facts. Knight retired in 2008 with over 900 wins, which was the most of any coach at that time. Knight was caught on video choking one of his players, Neil Reed. Knight won three NCAA championships. Knight threw a vase into a framed photo over the head of an athletic department secretary, shattering both objects and showering her with glass. The graduation rate for Knight's players was as high as 98%. During a fight, Knight broke a man's nose and dislocated his shoulder. That man was his 35-year-old son, Tim. Upon hearing of Knight's death, legendary Duke coach Mike Krzyzewski said, he recruited me, coached me, mentored me, and had a profound impact on my career and in my life. Knight physically assaulted IU Sports Information Director over a press release. I just presented an equal number of positive and negative points, but how do they actually add up when you put them all together? And since this is my page and I can do what I want, I'm going to editorialize briefly here. I grew up in Indiana during most of Knight's tenure, and I attended Indiana University in the fall of 2000 when he was fired. Knight was emblematic of an era in sports where coaches were revered for being volatile, and it was accepted because he got results, but it took a toll on the people around him. Hoosiers will regularly chalk it up to, they were tougher back then, or he did what it took to win. But how about some contrast? Another Hoosier legend, UCLA coach John Wooden, won 10 championships to Knights 3, and he did it by lifting up the people around him rather than tearing them down. Let's close on the chair. Former IU player and assistant coach Dan Dackage said the following, quote, the truth of the matter, he used to throw those red chairs all the time in practice. I think his record was 52 in one day. He kept firing them against the wall. Now, does that put things into more perspective? It's a pattern of behavior, not a single out of context incident. So the chair has become his legacy in a way, but you need the additional facts and images to get the full story told by this photo. And that's why ethical journalism is indispensable to our society.